Well, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank will also have an impact on the real estate market. Developers who tend to use regional banks for their financing uh, of their projects may run to into different issues here. Then there's also the mortgage side of the story with this failure. Is Are we going to see tightening standards even more tight uh, again and making it harder to be able to get a mortgage? Susan Wachter, real estate professor here at the Wharton School, joins us with more on that. Susan, great to talk to you again. Pleasure to be here. All right. So let me start with just kind of your overall view as to how you think this is going to impact real estate. Well, this is a troubling moment for real estate. Real estate, depending on the sector, has been is in a stress mode, particularly, of course, the office sector and the overall economy looking like it's going to go into potential recession and then definitely slow down. Uh, this is obviously a, a moment where interest uh, rates are key and lending is key. But the banks are now the sector that's in most distress as, as we speak. And the um, banks are likely to respond to their, their investors' uh, distress by lending less. And this is not a good thing for real estate. The worst case is a credit crunch. Uh, with potential consequences for the overall economy. Now, I don't know if you had seen that um, uh, SVB filed for bankruptcy, uh, Chapter 11 this morning. Does the filing for the Chapter 11 impact real estate in the short term? No, this is not a real estate uh, uh, specific entity. It's uh, more general. And of course, it's a, an entity that affects uh, Silicon Valley specifically and tremendously. So no, but there are others out there that of course are are uh, potentially at risk. And that's the concern. Most, for example, First Republic Bank is very much exposed and in, to real estate and, in, and real estate is exposed to First Republic Bank. And in general, the whole regional sector of banks is disproportionately the lender to real estate, to local regional real estate markets. So it's the regional banking sector that is at most risk at this point. And from that, uh, that channel is, is what real estate's now facing up to yet another down hit. So, so then with some of those banks coming together to give support to First Republic is part of the reason why, because of that exposure Absolutely. to the real estate market? Absolutely. So it's through real estate, which is in general most exposed to high uh, interest rates and tough credit markets, uh, that even the very largest banks will find themselves uh, at, at are at risk, not only to uh, to real estate, but of course, but of the overall economy of real estate uh, hit, is hit hard. That's going to be another another uh, uh, real risk to a potential uh, recession. There's obviously lots of pieces to the real estate market, but are, is there one side of this uh, this scenario that's affected by this uh, these issues with these banks more so than other? I'm thinking if you're comparing the commercial side with the single or multifamily side. Yes, absolutely. It's commercial that's affected. And it's commercial across the board that's affected. But you know, commercial real estate includes multifamily. And it includes, you know, all the real estate that that we're that we deal with day to day. And uh, it, it's a it's a huge sector to the overall economy, as well as itself, a an asset for the banking system. So we're in this potential doom loop of which we've seen before, but hopefully it's going to be now stymied, and we're going to this rescue, these various rescue missions. Uh, will in fact um, stabilize the banking sector and therefore uh, will will not lead to the worst case for the real estate that is a credit crunch. Can, can you explain why it is that that the commercial real estate market seems so comfortable working with the regional banking sector Absolutely. for a lot of it, their it, financing? It's, it's efficient. It makes tremendous sense because uh, real estate, well, of course, now it's national and global capital flows, is really regional and local. So for efficient lending, the lenders need to have a good eye on the prospects for their sectors, the future of the sectors, their capital needs, their risk. And the regional banks have done a tremendous job at this. And they're extremely important for that ecosystem of efficient lending, efficient production of real estate. It makes a lot of sense if indeed the regional banks are at risk. It's not only a, a short-term credit crunch risk, which is serious, but it's also a longer run risk to the ecosystem of lending. This is a very large country and it needs to have those regional eyes on. 
and, and I guess part of the also the reason why is I guess the expectation that you're going to see a lot of investors going for safer options right now, and that exactly. may leave real estate out, you know, out in the cold. Absolutely. We're joined by Susan Walker, who's a real estate professor here at the Warden School. One of the other things I saw in terms of, you know, the last few days is when you look at the potential impact on real estate, you also have to look at certain areas of the country, and especially because there's also a tie into tech with this, that places like Seattle and San Francisco may be areas where a lot of this impact is felt even more so. Absolutely. So they've been hit. This They've hit twice. They've been hit by the overall slowdown in the overall economy, uh, slowdown in interest rate increases. But of course, tech implosion is hitting these markets. But now, on top of that, the second, uh, the second step down, and it's a big one, is their lending sources are, are about to close down. Uh, however, that said, um, SVB and Signature are, are, you know, they will, they will go on in some way or form. They'll be uh, uh, purchased, but not in the current form, but they will be, there will be lending into these markets. But nonetheless, uh, this is not a good thing for a market that's already very hard hit, the West Coast market. And I guess the, the other side to it is it was an interesting kind of landscape for commercial real estate to begin with when you think about uh, the impact of coming out of the pandemic and how companies in some cases are kind of reassessing what their mix of office space is going to be. And the question by builders as to how much they want to invest in potential future projects as well. Yes, well, the office apocalypse is absolutely the case for the West Coast. Uh, East Coast, smaller markets, you know, office markets do have a future, but the West Coast, San Francisco markets are really hard hit, and this makes it worse. We saw mortgage rates actually tick lower uh, this week as well. What kind of uh, what kind of scenario are we looking at there? Tim? Well, it's a bit of a glimmer of a silver lining there. Or there. Uh, is there a, a yeah. So a bit of a silver lining there, a bit of a glimmer. Uh, it, of course, if the economy goes into recession, mortgage rates absolutely will go down. And that's usually the beginning of a healing process where buyers can come back into the market. But in this case, we not only need to have mortgages tick down by 1% or so, we need the underlying inflation rate to resolve. And that's a bigger issue. How much do you think this is is all going to be impacting the decisions that the Federal Reserve is going to have to make around interest rates here in the next week or so? And then obviously the downstream impact on the real Abs estate market. Absolutely. Front of mind. Absolutely. The financial stability. You know, the Fed actually has three missions. Uh, unemployment is a secondary mission. That, but and of course, stability is the uh, monetary stability. Inflation is the first but there is the overall financial stability. And right now that's at what is at most risk and they'll definitely have eyes on. At the same time, the resolve for bringing inflation down, uh, sending that message will also be key to the Fed. So what are you most watching, or uh, what are you watching most closely in terms of real estate here in the short term? Well, most, most closely actually is the banking sector, which is now the critical factor for real estate markets. And the fact that these uh, large 11 banks, the largest 11 banks came together to infuse capital of um, uh, 30 billion into First Republic is an extremely good sign, very, very good move because it recirculates capital, which is flowing right now to the big banks. And uh, in the end, will help the big banks in terms of the regional banks, which of course are uh, where the real estate uh, goes first for, for loans. So yes, uh, there are other sources of lending and the real estate sector overall, we need to watch its economy and its outcome. And that, of course, will depend on the overall economy. These are all interrelated issues. Scale of one to 10, where's your level of concern about all of this impact on real estate right now? Well, of course, it does depend on the sector. And we were saying how office is definitely in the crosshairs. Uh, single family and multifamily will be the first to recover if we go into a slowdown. And the good news is that the single family mortgage market actually is in safe hands and it's stable. So that uh, is you know, where I my, my focus is on because of course that's, uh, that's middle America. That's all of our uh, resources going forward in terms of our, our kids, children, new people trying to get homes, et cetera. Uh, that fortunately is a stable component of the economy at this moment. 
Although, Susan, still, if I may yeah. say so, stable, yeah. but still rates are too high. 